So it is just after 3 p.m. and Mythcard just entered closed beta. And I have some packs that I want to open. And I want to open them with you guys so that you guys can sort of see a little bit about the drop rates and uh, some of the cool stuff that we pick out of the pack. Because pack opening videos are awesome and good way to uh, you know spend some time. So we've got about a little over 120 packs, 121 I believe. So we're going to go and jump into that. And uh, let's uh, cross our fingers and hope we get lucky. All right, so this is the um, first starts to the closed beta. Uh, brand new account, and I've got 121 packs, of course, set to open. As you can see, no games essentially played. Uh, no XP, no nothing. We're really just starting out. So we're going to go ahead and just uh, let's uh, open the packs and uh, get to uh, what we've got going on. So this is also really cool. It's a new pack opening screen that we've got going on, which is really cool. No new animations necessarily, but it's still pretty damn cool. Dust Devil, there's my uh, big card. Lots of cool stuff. Giant Stairway is definitely something that I'll be playing. Howling Abyssal, very cool. Now we're looking for prestige cards and things of that nature. So we're gonna cruise through them. That's always been hilarious to look at. Revelation of Zimic. This is a card that I really wanted in Alpha and Miso Libre also. I'm a very much a blue and yellow player. I really like the uh, dynamic of blue and yellow. Lane enchantments and all the like. Another Miso Libre, that's pretty good. Just a common card, but we play a bunch of those. Ooh, Helm of Conscription. So we're getting the yellow rares that we want. Uh, no big hits yet. We're gonna see how this goes. Another Grinning Coldlock. There's our first Mythic. Kosche, the Deathless. Very cool card. Uh, you know, Deadly after type. There's a lot of uh, tech that goes with this for the uh, for green or emerald, however you want to call that color. Still cruising through. Hey, more yellow. Wonder Drug. That went into the deck. Same with the maze. Let's make it happen. There's a nice uh, yellow wild card right there. All right, Dead Man's Eyes. That's a card that actually just got changed, if I'm not mistaken. You no longer gain two life on a heads, but Dead Man's Eyes is a, a card that uh, was getting some play. Dire Benediction, very cool card. Enchant Eater. Hey, there's another one. All right, two color mythic big boy right here. Uh, Herald of Conquest. Uh, it's got eight mana, double orange, double purple, overrun, seven, six creature. All your friendly creatures have plus two, plus two, and overrun. That is your big boy right there. That is definitely a big boy. Uh, I, uh, Iyer's Daughter is a, a card that I definitely play in yellow and blue. Zertian Recruiter, some good cards here. Black and Jotun as well. All right, let's go here. Boom, Cataclysm. Here is another great card. Uh, Cataclysm, deal five damage to all minions and players. It's a very much a control card, obviously. It's a big, big, big boy board wipe. Uh, for blue and yellow, which I like to play, kind of mid-range control, that's very much a card that I will be playing. Ghost in the system, very cool. So, so far our rares have actually leaned very much towards yellow, blue. Got some oranges in there as well. That's a nice prestige card for Jorth Song. Dashing Ringmaster, very good card in red aggro, giving rush to creatures that otherwise would have no business being that rushful. There's another prestige card liking that. And Incubation Chamber. Incubation Chamber made it its way into uh, some decks I played, then kind of took us back seat. It was a little bit slow, but still a playable card in, in uh, some archetypes. Peach of Life. Should that be your fruit of choice? Uh, Garden of Irv Irie. I'm pronouncing these uh, incorrectly. That is my own boon, is when you have to pronou uh, pronounce things 
and pronounce them correctly so as to not feel or sound like a complete idiot, right? Let's just bust open some of these packaroos and see what happens. There we go. Fire Song Prodigy, great card. Puts an ignition spell into your hand. A good mono red or even red control, though. Uh, the double red kind of gives a little bit of uh, a slow start, a little bit of restriction. Splicing Lab's cool as well. Again, if you're playing Enchantment Lab, Splicing Lab is nice for an enchantment related sort of control deck. Give your creatures a little bit of extra spice as they uh, continue. Spirit Away. Alrighty. Samasek, the Living Sword. Some more artifacts as well. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Depends on the colors that you're looking for. I mean, I try to make some red aggro. There's another incubation chamber, which should tap out our uh, yellow incubation chambers. That's two now. But for that uh, gold slot. Hey now, placeholder art. Who does not like placeholder art, right? Draugr. Look at him. I do not know what the hell is going on over here. You got these squiggly lines of doom coming out. Either there's some type of uh, smell coming from the background. He has a drill protruding from his pelvis, uh, which he, I assume, uh, put to work into this ground over here. Uh, nonetheless, it's a 10 on 10 placeholder art. There should be like a, a power rankings for placeholder art. And as they kind of sort of go away slowly, Bellavode, really cool card. It enchantment while occupied, all combat damage dealt to you and other minions is reduced to one. This is an incredible enchantment card. Uh, the epitome of control and stabilization. Any instances of damage essentially turn into uh, you know a one spot. Spirit away, second spirit away. Sounds good to me. No Yahoo's, no Fire Dart Frogs. These are cards that were staples in uh, the decks I was making. Davia the Wastes. Yeah, so the deck I, I sort of, I don't want to say fell in love with, but that I built that I really enjoyed was a yellow and blue mid-range control that uh, from an earlier creature perspective, that's balance, good card. Uh, from earlier creature perspectives came down with Yahooey and Fire Dart Frog just to kind of keep a little bit of uh, unfavorable trades for the opponent. Uh, White Moon Arena. Uh, so that you can sort of establish your lanes and establish your uh, bigger creatures and your, your otherwise your win conditions and such. But uh, Blood Idols, interesting. Wings of Abaddon, another pretty much a, a mono red and aggro red staple card that's gonna see some uh that's gonna see some love maze of yaktiku and fleeting thunderbird this is a card i've never played with but uh it's in the yellow category so it's gonna get a look for me at least five three overrun it has breach return to its uh to owner's hand and gets one one permanently it's, it's essentially attack and come back. That is a really cool card. I believe that one is part of a combo piece. I could be wrong, but there we go. And Spirit Away, a third Spirit Away. So we're starting to uh, hit doubles, triples, sort of going beyond our deck limits on things. Those get turned into essence, so it's not the end of the world. God's Bane Transport, so the adjacent soldier minions have armor too. Uh, we're not really playing soldiers, or we don't plan on it, at least from the get-go. We sort of have a plan of attack that we want to take, and that's not part of it at the moment. Magpire Squad Leader. Adjacent minions have plus one, plus one. It's kind of a, a cool card to throw in into anything with the yellow. I mean, just getting value off of your, uh, your uh, cards. We had Marching Orders in that one under the green category. What else we got here? Thunderclap. There's Thunderclap. Deal two damage to your opponent and all enemies. That is a good, good uh, just cleanup card for aggro or swarm. We're going to be playing that for sure. There is Sandscale Worm. Has Swift and Teleport while occupying a Desert Enchantment. It's a key card for Desert Synergies. Orange has a lot of uh, Desert-related Synergies. Lots of good stuff from there. That's cool. Another Prestige. Hello, Xerxian Hideout. And here we go. 
More placeholder art. Canine Cavalry. It's a 2-2 two, two enchantment. Again, we're going to rate this as a 12 on 10 for, uh, for placeholder art, right? Looks really good. All right, let's keep cruising. Trassic Kraken. Like it. Ah, oh, there's Maelstrom, another card that we're going to definitely be playing in our enchantment control. That pretty much does one damage uh, through the five uh, the five lanes that kind of occupy around it. We're going to love that one for sure. Let's check in here. Verdant Jungle. Hey, Singing Stone. That is uh, another card that we're going to love to play. Again, in enchantment-related uh, decks, especially blue, that is a solid one-drop to play, costing one blue. Harvester. Man, we are hitting pretty much the things that we want to hit. Another one would be like Headless One in the Mythic category. Another Harvester would be really, really good for us. Um, Ayer's Daughter, uh, another Thunderclap perhaps. Uh, Misanthropia would be a good hit another singing stone there's an enchantment eater we're we're hitting what we want to hit which is blue uh, and yellow kind of enchantment control stuff like spiders would be good as well uh, another miso libre just a common card there but we would also uh, really like to find snake pits things like that snake pits are going to help out the wild card drop rate i find is a little bit um, well, as I say that, I get two in a row and a yellow mythic. Sacrificial altar. While occupied, friendly players draw an extra card per turn. At the start of your turn, give occupying minion minus one, one, and all your other minions minus, uh, plus one, plus one. This is definitely a worthwhile card. So our mythic drops have been pretty exceptional so far. We've liked them. The lore broker. we got here more placeholder art the stretcher stretcher and dragon's tooth uh is definitely a card combination that red related control decks would like to see uh or would like to play uh i would definitely recommend that if you have those cards you could probably build something a little spooky with those two cards dragon's tooth and stretcher uh you can even add in some yellow to a oh, cataclysm another cataclysm nice uh another stretcher in order to purely just allow your uh opponent to just draw out there's the uh there's a verdant jungle prestigious axolotl a a blue mythic wild card which is essentially the that's uh that's the tits baby that's what they say that is the absolute uh that that's the nuts when you're looking for cards it's you want mythic wilds now the mythic wilds again are are essentially locked to the color that they represent so you you can't do anything about turning a blue mythic into like a red gold let's say but uh you know when it comes to actually opening cards if everything was was wild cards you'd never have any issues you'd have everything you want right so we're having some fun locking down what we want and what we need so there's extract life a really really good red removal card very good red removal card Ah, uh, Temptation. The Temptation being buying more packs sometimes. There's our second Dashing Ringmaster. So we have all the Dashing Ringmasters we need to make a red aggro deck of pure life and shame. All right, Jade Puma. We're very much seeking Yahui, uh, which I believe is uncommon. Fire Dart Frog, if I'm not mistaken, is common. So we'd like to see that. That would be a great one. Mind Freak. All right, well. Chris Angel making an appearance up in this piece. All right, oopsie dopsies. Blood Moon. Pew, pew, pew. Let's -a go. Hey, a golden uh that's a gold yellow um wild card which is excellent for us that's probably our other harvester if we're gonna have to get down to that spot harvester is a card that we're, we really enjoy playing 
And maybe we pull another one. Or we pull Nine-Tailed Vixen, uh, Lurker and Deadly. At the start of your turn, return the bottom spirit minion in your Boneyard to your hand. Very cool card. Lurker minion gives it some survivability as well, which is good. So I think we're up to, what, four Mythics already? It's not a bad drop. There's our other Harvester, so never mind. Okay, our yellow rare card could be something else. Could very much be something else. Depending on what we get. There's our Yahui. Finally got one of those. Magmatar, a phenomenal red card. Uh, there's one that gets a lot of love in red decks. Allows you to sort of clear out some defenders and then go ham. That's Night Hag. That is a scary being. Bogeyman. So again, we're getting a nice little uh, Tail Root Worm is good. Hoarding Hero. They changed the art on Hoarding Hero. Hoarding Hero used to be one that had some really hilarious placeholder art in purple. More wild cards. I like it. Magpire Sniper, Lurker, Agile, Piercing. And Piercing. All these wicked cool names and stuff all right another prestige card i had a, a the other in alpha i had a pack that uh ended up being double prestige which was kind of cool still looking for that ever so popular you know rare prestige card if we can find it <laughs> decoy ao Celestial Dragon, an 8-8 eight, eight for 6. Agile, Demise, add a Ring of Eternity item to your opponent's hand. Uh, in, in, wow. Interesting. Well, that is definitely, that's a card that we want, so. We want all the Mythics, give them to us. Hello, Godspore Mushroom. There's a second Magmatar. I don't know if this game starts you with Magmatars, I'm not sure. Nonetheless, having two of those is gonna be very key. That's a card you want two of for sure. There's no reason not to uh, play two Magmatars. Red decks are, are usually go fast. There's the Goliath's Web, that's the other one we wanted. Put the Snake Trap next to that, generate a snake, move it into the uh, the snake trap that gives it deadly, and you're good to go. All right, that's a third uh, singing stone, so that's just extra juice right now, which we can sort of uh, dust a little later. Magmire Cub, Magpire Commando in the prestige format. I wonder what the drop rate is for Mythic, uh, Mythic Prestige. I really do not know. All right, so we got the two harvesters we'd like thunderclap cataclysm things like that we have uh we've got some pretty good mythics for uh what we're looking to find all right dissonant drone i have played with that card it is an interesting card to play it's very niche because yellow red is not a typical combination. Another dead man's eyes that has been nerfed from alpha to now. You no longer gain two life upon a sexful, uh, sexful. Wowza pauza. Upon a successful coin flip. Neo Gangnam. Well, there's a double wild card. Uh, double, um, sorry, double uncommon wild card pull as well those are going to be super valuable we like those miso libre like that card as well hey now reincarnation return all minions in your boneyard that were added during your opponent's last turn to your hand with ephemeral and their mana cost reduced to zero a nice little reanimation style card there kapowza blam let's go 
the Feng Shui Master. The Digital Golem. Fun fact, before the Boneyard was the Boneyard, as in the podcast that I host. Uh, Digital Golem was one of the ideas for a, a name for the show I wanted to put make. You'll do da two damage to all enemy minions. This is a very cool card. Good control card. I wanted to call the podcast the Digital Golem, and uh, it was met with a uh, meh. So I said fine. And I suggested, I actually gave a list of five. And one of them was the digital bone, uh, the digital golem. And there was also, one of them was the Alpha Strike podcast. I wanted to take something from the game, right? Boom, Olama Ring, great card. That was, uh, we want two of those for our deck that we're planning on building. Uh, sea Haven. So the cool part is, is we're, we're getting a lot of uh, the enchantment rares that we want to find. I would love to find a headless one. Another wonder drug. Wonder drugs, meh, in moderation. You take one, you don't want to become dependent, right? The bald mountain. <laughs> that is, sounds like a character from Game of Thrones, like a parody of Game of Thrones. There's some more, uh, that's a 10 on 10 placeholder art there, if you ask me. Another Sea Haven, no problem. I think that we found a Serpent's Den as well in that pack. So that's pretty good. No, did we even find any laser grids? Did we pull a single laser grid? I don't think we did. Laser grid is another card that, uh, definitely helps us out same thing with fire dart frog and yahoo i mean we're not really finding the smaller cars iris daughter is, is a nice one there's a third canine cavalry so starting to find some duplicates coming in here well triplicates i suppose in that category dire benediction i know that might be our second or third one of those another serpent's den Wings of Abaddon is our second one. So that we're, we got two Ringmasters, two uh, Wings of Abaddon. In terms of red aggressiveness, we're looking to be doing okay. And Strigor Familiar. Cool. But I mean, Laser Grid, Yahooie, Fire Dart Frog, things I would play. Hello. Regen 2, your life cannot be re reduced below 1 while this is in play. Phenomenal. That is a, yeah, I cannot lose until this is dead. Great stuff. Kind of like a, a second face, the bulletproof vest. Very cool card there. So we're, we've cruised through 100 packs already. Uh, we've done so with relative reckless abandon. Vicious Cycle, there's a great one. This uh, goes well with uh, your Stretcher slash Dragon's Tooth deck. And another Maelstrom. So we're... Uh, we're looking good. We're looking okay. I believe you're... I don't know if you're already kitted out with a Misanthropia. There's the Dragon's Teeth that we're talking about. But uh, Misanthropia, another cool deck to play with. Uh, another cool card kind of gets you out of a jam. White Moon Arena, another one of those. So what are we looking for? Well, while we kind of round out the last 10 to 12 packs, um, things like, uh, I guess maybe Laser Grid, but we have other cards that are, are just as good. But um, Yahooie, Fire Dart Frog, Headless One. If we're gonna be going down the deck route that we're, I think we're gonna go when we start off, kind of a mid-range control, then that's where we're gonna go. I would suspect that as the game enters its, its uh, beginning stages of beta, I would imagine that a lot of people are going to be favoring aggro decks because they're relatively cheap to construct and, and uh, easier to pilot. Um, so we can assume that there's going to be a lot of uh, go wide decks, go face decks. And the way to sort of deal with those is by uh, loading up on smaller creatures that can trade favorably or uh, punish, uh, punish trading. 
and creating enchantments and such that will um, make it uncomfortable for your opponent to attack, right? Another Fos Grim. Open up. Let's go. Uh, another, that's a third Wonder Drug. So we're, we're, we're tripling and quadrupling up now on cards. But I got, there's a Laser Grid. Finally found one. Took over 100 packs to get there in the uncommon slot kind of feels bad sometimes when you have when you open over 100 packs and, and there's just that like one uncommon that you're kind of hoping to pull and uh it just doesn't come uh come to fruition but here we are now busting up some of this cool stuff right hello bulwark nice looking card in prestige Hey now, Loki's Veil, Unsuppressible, uh, Awaken, target an artifact or enchantment while occupied enemy artifacts or enchantments with the same name as the target uh, is suppressed. Uh, occupying minute has lurkers. So this is essentially like snuff out a uh, an artifact or an enchantment, but it also goes and clears across the board of all such uh, instances of that. So you can't you can honestly lock down an entire stratagem just by by locking out the one piece that's kind of causing issues right uh security phalanx and wow a fourth wonder drug lots of wonder drugs today and all right let's see how lucky we get here uh there is my finally i'm finally picking up a fire dart frog which is always good to see and kablamo uh triassic kraken and that does it i suppose right there goes uh, all the jam that we had no more to be opened